Hello, I'm James Clark from the Department of Physiology at King's College London. And in this short presentation, I'm going to go through some of the settings you might need in OBS and PowerPoint in order to set up your recordings for presentations. We're going to start in OBS, and the first place to go is the settings window. The settings window is where you can find all the settings for the software that allow you to set up your recording, your presentations, your resolutions, your keyboard shortcuts, and those kind of things. The general pane you can pretty much leave as it is, because that's, that's okay, those settings are fairly okay. The third is the output setting. In the output setting down below in the second half here, there's the recording section, and I've set my recording path to my desktop. So when I record an MP4 from OBS, it'll save it onto my desktop. At least I know where that is, and that's a good place to keep it. It's also worth keeping the recording quality the same as the stream, and having your stream at a constant bitrate of around about 2,500 kilobytes per second. That'll ensure that the quality of your video is, is good enough for what we need it for. In the audio settings, it's worth setting your sample rate to 44.1 and keeping your recording in stereo, but you will need to disable all of these devices in order for the recording to work as you intend it to. In the advanced section, you can choose what your monitoring device is. I've left this as my USB speakers, but you can also leave this as a default for the system or any other settings you choose. In the video settings, you want to make sure that the output resolution is 1920 by 1080. This is full HD 1080. This is useful because those with pads, surfaces, even phones, will need the highest resolution possible in order to be able to see your slides and zoom in if they need to. And it's worth keeping the frames per second, the frame rate, to 25. 25 is the standard um, frame rate for European recordings. Underneath there we have hotkeys. We're going to come back to hotkeys in a minute, although I have done a second tutorial on this showing how you can assign hotkeys to change your scenes. In the advanced setting, leave this as it is. It's probably the best place uh, for it. These are the default settings, so let them stay. So once you've set those up, you're, you're good to go. The first thing you need to do when using OBS is to consider what it is you're going to be recording or presenting. So for instance, in this demonstration, I want to show a webcam picture of me talking. I want to show the slide set. I want to show the slide set with a small inset of a webcam image. And I want to show a slide with the webcam side by side in order for me to explain perhaps an image on the screen. So with those four layouts, I can now go back to OBS and set it up as four separate scenes. We're now back in OBS, so I'm going to go to my first scene, right-click, choose Rename, and I'm going to call this Webcam. I'm then going to add a new scene, and my second scene I'm going to call Slides, because this is going to be the second scene where I just want to see the slides. I then add a third scene, Slides and Webcam, and finally a fourth scene, which is going to be my side by side. So now although I've got my four scenes set up, they have no sources and therefore no content, so I want to add the content. So let's start with the webcam. In the sources window, I click on the plus box and I choose from the drop down list, video capture device. I can't call this webcam because the name webcam is already used in the scenes menu as my first scene. So I'm just going to call this cam and press OK. I need to set some properties for this new device. So I click on the device and I choose my webcam. And there I am. I then choose the resolution and I'm going to choose the 1280 by 720 because that's the highest resolution that this camera supports in OBS. And I can press OK. I can then stretch this image to fill the screen and I'm happy now that my cam is set up. So now I am happy my webcam is set up, you'll notice there is no audio device set up. So although I'll be able to record me talking, I won't be able to actually hear anything I'm saying. So I need to add another source here 
and this source is going to be an audio input capture. So I click on audio input capture and I'm going to call this mic because it's my microphone and I'll choose from the drop down list my default microphone and press OK. And now when I talk you can see the VU meter bouncing up and down ensuring that I'm recording audio at the same time. So now I need to go to my slide scene and add my PowerPoint presentation. Well, at the moment, I don't actually have a presentation to put on here, but I can set this up ready for when I want to do it. So I can click on plus and choose display capture. I'm going to call these slide view. And from the menu you get, you have to choose the display in which the presentation is being done, which in my case is my single monitor. And I have to choose how I want to crop the image. Cropping is where you delete unwanted parts from your image. I want to crop to a window. But the window doesn't exist yet, so I'm going to leave this blank until I've loaded up PowerPoint. But I'm going to press OK. So my slides, although they're not visible, are ready to go. As before, I need to add an audio input capture. And rather than creating a new one, I can add my existing pre-formatted microphone. And now you can see the VU meters are bouncing up and down because it's recording my microphone. Now I want to record the slides and the webcam. Well, this is easy. I can select both the slides and the mic, choose copy, go to slides and webcam and choose paste. And now it's copied and pasted the exact same settings into the slides and webcam. I can then go back to webcam, copy the camera, go back to slides and webcam and paste in the camera. And now the camera appears above the microphone and the slide view. When you paste or make these new uh, sources, you'll see they have these red boxes around them. The red box allows you to resize your image and I can then place my camera down the bottom right hand side of my screen and the slides will appear in this box here. Finally, I've got my side by side view. The side-by-side -side view needs to contain the camera, the mic, and the slides, but in a slightly different format. So this is easy. We can highlight all of these from the slides and webcam view and choose copy. Go to our new scene side-by-side -side and paste these in. So what we need to do now is open up PowerPoint in order to set up our slideshow. And in true Blue Peter style, here's one I prepared earlier. In the slideshow menu, I'm going to go to the setup slideshow and make sure it's been browsed by an individual in a window. This makes life much easier when you come to give your presentation using OBS, especially if you've only got one monitor, and press OK. Then you can start your slideshow and leave it on the first slide on the screen, ready to go. Now we return to OBS, go to the slide scene, choose the slide view source and double click and now we can choose the window from the drop-down list and choose our presentation. It's a PowerPoint slideshow presentation one because that's what my presentation is called. If your presentation is called something else, it'll be here as well. And there we are. There's our presentation now appearing on the screen. I can press OK. You'll notice that the presentation has the title bar up the very top here. That's because the presentation here has a small title bar. I can get rid of this title bar by right-clicking on the image and choosing Transform, Edit Transform, and cropping the top by approximately 20 pixels, and that will remove this menu bar. Windows and Mac operating systems may show a different size menu bar, but in my machine it shows a 20 pixel menu bar. I can then expand this to fill the frame, and there are my presentations. Conveniently, if I go to my slides and webcam now, it is automatically copied over the slides. I just need to apply the same crop in the Edit Transform section by adding a 20 pixel top crop. And then I can expand these slides to fill the frame. And you'll see that my video is nicely placed down the bottom. If you think your video is too big once you've done this, you can always select the camera and make it a little bit smaller or even move it around the frame to anywhere you think might be more suitable. And finally I go to my side-by-side -side view, there's my presentation, I apply the same transformation with a 20 crop at the top 
and then I can place this on the screen where I want it side by side with my video. I can then click on my video and place that and move things around until I'm happy with the layout. Interestingly, for this presentation, I want this slide to be slightly wider and I want my image to be slightly smaller. So I can right click on my webcam and choose Transform, Edit Transform, and I can actually crop out some pixels from the left and the right of my webcam image, make my webcam a little bit more square, leaving a little bit more room for my slide deck. This means I still get to see the webcam, but I also get to see slightly bigger slides. So now with the presentation running in the background, I can switch between webcam and say hello, my slides and show my presentation, my slides and my webcam, and my slides and my webcam side by side. Once you are happy with this, you go to scene collection and I'm going to say duplicate this and I'm going to call it PPT Prez and I'm going to save this now. So every time I load OBS, this setting will be available for me in the scene collection dialog box. All I need to do next time when I load it is to make sure that the presentation source is assigned to the correct presentation. If no presentation is loaded, like this, the presentation source will appear blank. This will just remind you to reassociate it with the correct presentation. So I hope that helps. It's a little bit long, but once you've got this set up once, you'll never need to set it up again because it will just work every time you load the software. Of course, once you've got it all set up and you're ready to give your presentation, you can move through your slides in the same way that you would usually move through your slides in PowerPoint, either using your mouse or the cursor buttons. Just remember to click Start Recording before you start your presentation. If you found this tutorial useful, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel.